Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. We're joined by a very, very special guest. The last time that she came here, she hadn't, you know, gotten pregnant with her baby. But now, reports have it that she has two <laughs> babies. So that means it's been a pretty long while that the, Ven the Venus bushfires has joined us. She's back and back with her instruments, the hung. She is the writer and producer of the world's first ever pigeon document, Pigeon Opera, Pigeon English Opera, and I hopefully I'll be making her perform it here mm -hmm. on Hello Nigeria. It's a delight to have you, Davina. It's Bishpire. wonderful to be back. Thank you so much for Welcome. having me. Welcome. <laughs> so the last time you came, you were pregnant. Yes, my first first child. I know, you have two. And I have got two. One is um, two years and seven months, and the other one is one year and four months. Look at how so. time flies. A girl <laughs> yes. and a boy or two girls? Two, two girls. Boys. Perfect. Oh, girls beautiful. are taking over the world. So oh yes, positive. I say to people that it's a blessing to have a girl child. It really and is. I know I, people say I'm saying this because I'm a girl child, but I know how how rewarding it yeah. is. This girl know. never leaves you as well. Sorry? She never leaves you, the girl. Exactly, She'll never. She'll be making my pound in yam too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm way into my 70s, 80s. I thank God for it. Now that you're a mother. Yeah. How do you have to explain your art and your craft and your very interesting hairstyle, which you've always carried, to your little girls? Do you know what? Um, today, my eldest, she saw me and she said, Mummy, singing. And she just carried on about her business and she, you know, went on to play outside. So it's very normal to, the, you know, to them. We, I sang through my pregnancy. I played the music. They've been on my shows. You know, they've been singing in the background. So for them, it's very, actually very natural. When they see me wearing this, they just say, earrings. Because that's what they think. They say, okay, oh. the side of your head, earrings. So um, it's not actually unusual for them. It's normal. <laughs> How did you get to decide this brand and this styling? We'll come to the name, but yes. let's start with the look. So at the last time that I interviewed you, you had the same hairstyle. Yeah. On. How did you get to choose that this is the look you always wanted to be remembered for? Well, I think I want to be close to the, so to the soil, close to the earth. And for me, it kind of reminds me of balance and equilibrium and trees. And growing up, I thought, what, wouldn't it be amazing to be a tree? So I thought, for me, I just thought, why can't I take that into my art? And why can't I just be true to myself? Even if it might seem a bit strange to people, why has she got bamboo in her hair? Because it's natural. And for me, it's, I just want to kind of pay ode or homage to Mother Nature. And have you had like strange reactions? How long did it take you to get very comfortable with the stairs? Because I'm sure that every time you get on a plane or you get into a shopping mall yeah. or in the market, you would definitely <laughs> get people turning well, to stare at well, you. Well, when I, when I travel to certain places, I have to be mindful of the size. So, of course, if I'm going to a big party, then I have to maybe have a smaller kind of hairstyle. If I know there's going to be lots of kids, they're going to want to pull my hair to have it smaller, maybe more hair wrapped around, my, wrapped around the bamboo. But um, I'm, I was very comfortable with the stairs or whatever. Sometimes people might say, this is very unusual. I say, thank you. Oh, you're very unique. Thank you. Sometimes, this is strange. Thank you. <laughs> you know, I love to stand. I say, let your flag fly. Whatever your flag is, let it fly. Now, let's talk about your name, the Venus Bushfires. How did that come about? Um, I was actually in Benin City, which is where my family's from, where I'm from, um, in Edo State, and I was seeing my grandmother, and I remember that um, she had some land that she didn't really want to make into a house. She was happy where she was. My mum kept saying, let me you know, build this fabulous you know, house for you. Finally, you're my mother. We need to do this ha build this house for you. She said, no, 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 just burn the, the place and then let, what, let the, the vegetables grow. And for me, that was so poignant because I didn't realize that when there is a bushfire, um, the, the, the land becomes more fertile. So it's, sometimes it happens by nature and sometimes it happens by you know, us starting the fire. But when you clear the land, it actually grows more fertile. So I just love that. I just I thought bushfires. But there was an Aborigine band called Bushfires. But I also love the stars. I love um, astronomy. I love astrology i love sort of the planets and just knowing that we're part of a smaller uh, we're part of a bigger system and we're really that small whatever your problem big whatever your problem small you really don't matter that much in the grand scheme of things so that kind of keeps me balanced in a way this traffic is not a big deal this um hardship it seems hard now but it's not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things so i thought the venus bushfires 
and I love the celebration of the feminine and the masculine, but the balance. And I, I, for me, that, as soon as I said it to myself, I said, you're wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> this is my name. And so which it. of the Venus did you pick? Is it um, the Venus of Mercury, Venus of Earth? It's Mars, not even... <laughs> or Venus, the goddess of love? It's more, in, it's more in tune with Venus, the goddess of love, and um, not particularly any kind of a Greek or Roman mythology kind of Aphrodite Venus, but it's just I love the idea that um, it's woman, it's feminine, it's positive, it's strong, it's inspiring, all the things that I, I aspire to be. So, A month ago, we celebrated International Women's Day on yeah. the 8th of March, to be precise. And there's so much. You know, the year, the theme for this year was Balance for Better. Yeah. And we're starting to see that we're having the more uncomfortable conversations yeah. about women and how we need to catch up in a lot of things. Yeah. First of all, um, the World uh, the world Economic Forum Gender Gap Report stated that it will take about 200 years wow. for us to breach the gender gap, you know, uh, and there's so many conversations we're starting to have, but you're very woman, you're very feminine, and that's all that you embody, your personality and your music. Mm. What would some of the changes you'd like to see, what would be some of the changes you'd like to see, you know, for women in the Nigerian space? I think a lot of the time is even having the confidence to put yourself forward for that job, put yourself forward for that apprenticeship, put yourself forward for that, um, for that you know, course to study at university and things like that. I think there are barriers but a lot of the barriers are also the barriers that we have had instilled in ourselves, that we don't even go for those opportunities. You ask a girl, what does she want to do? Oh, I don't mind supporting so-and-so. No, I always say to my daughter, I need to give you proper food. I need to give you proper pounded and proper eba, because you're going to run the world one day and you're going to need a full stomach. So I think there are a lot of barriers, but it's a, a psychological barrier as well and social constructs that don't necessarily support a strong woman and don't support um, a woman that says she's going to be a leader but at the same time if I speak to any Nigerian family the woman is running the show I mean I've got a husband <laughs> and I've got a father but I have seen how things work around the other side so you know so women are strong we're capable of doing many things um, but why this doesn't tr translate um, you know, professionally, a lot of the time, I think it's because of those psychological barriers, but we have many reforms to do with the law and institutions as well, for sure. Interesting. Let's talk about your music. You released an EP in 2013. Whoa. And <laughs> before that, you had the world's first ever Pigeon English opera. Tell yeah, us about that. after that, yeah. Okay, it was after that, 2015. 15, exactly, yes, yeah. 2015. So I composed the world's first Pigeon English opera, so it's the first of its kind. And in the opera world, I think it's quite dynamic because opera is normally sung in Italian, French, um, German, and sometimes English. But for me, I really wanted to have the dialogue. What is high art? What is low art? Who decides? Why? Why can't I be part of that discussion? You know, and also not that many women in composing. That's why I wanted to compose and produce with my husband, Baba Apega, um, with um, his company, MC3, without him by my side, I would not have been able to do this. You know, he also celebrates women. He really thinks that it's such a positive thing for me to be putting myself forward like this. And um, it was in London in 2015, Cape Town 2016. All this time I'm thinking, I want to bring it to Nigeria. It's Nigerian Pigeon, I'm speaking, why can't we do it? So but finally we actually performed it here two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, was the the, it was fantastic. The Deputy British um, High Commissioner, she actually invited me. She said she wanted to put on a show and I said, well, this is the kind of show I want to put on. And um, we had it outside, and it was magic. It How was did I fantastic. miss this? How did I not know it, this? It was just, it was literally just um, like a taster. To, to you, kind of, I hope you're going to do something again in Nigeria. Oh, yeah. I would definitely love to Yeah, we're going to be at the Mike Adenugu, uh, Adenuga um, France, Alliance Francais Centre. Oh, nice. Um, so when it opens, we're going to be there in the middle of July, um, June, dates TBC, but I'll definitely let you know. Okay. And also Muson Centre in November, okay. 7th and 8th. Fingers crossed. I definitely look forward to seeing all that. Yeah. But for now, let's take a sneak peek into the amazing art that the Venus Bushfires present. Check it out, and when we come back, we'll be speaking some more with her. And that is Last Winter Sparrow by the Venus Bushfires. Very artsy, very artistic and very deep. Thank you. Know, you. The, 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 you gave some explanations about what inspired you to write that. I'd like you to share that one there. Um, basically, the story is about a, a sparrow, a very small sparrow. It's coming towards the end of its life and it realizes, oh my God, I never got the chance to be an eagle. So it climbs towards the top of a belf belfry, a tall tower, and that it soars across the horizon and it hopes that the people at the, at the bottom see the shadow and think it's that of an eagle. And did that work? 
Yes. <laughs> Isn't that what we do as humans? So it's right. basically about um, the human endeavor to be greater in legend. Whatever we did in life, the tombstone will say, so-and-so did this, even though you were just a sparrow. So at the end of the day, live your life as the eagle, rather than being the sparrow trying to live, a sh live under the shadow of the eagle. Live life so to express the full. express yourself as much as With you your can wings open. And fly. Exactly. Let's talk about your hung before we get to feel your music. Now, this is a very unique instrument. This is the first yeah, time in my open. life I've ever seen this. No, second time. The first time was, was the last time you came. Yeah. The second time. <laughs> so tell us about it. I know you told me an interesting story about this instrument earlier. But yeah, so this is probably the only one in Africa at the moment. And um, it's called a hung, so which means hand. It's, um, from, it's um, made by a Swiss couple, Felix and Sabine. But it's inspired by a lot of African um, drums and tales and things like that. And I, I love it because it's quite relaxing and meditative. And it's not the shaky, shaky, bum, bum kind of music kind of style. It's more an opportunity to be reflective and to think about what's happening in Nigeria and Africa, the world. And how, how, what's the relationship between you? Because every artist has a relationship, a special bond with their yeah. instrument. Like I was saying to you before, actually, when I said, I think I probably would have said, before I had my child, this was my child. And I would say to my husband, ah, be careful. Everywhere, everywhere when we traveled, be careful. It's easier to get a child than hung. And then as soon as I had my two children, I realized that that's not the case at all. But for me, this is such a special instrument. And my, my first born, she plays this. And as of last week, my second born now plays this. They saw me doing an, an interview on TV and they said, ah, mommy's instrument, she plays it. I can play it, you know. Aww. So it was just such a magical. When I first got my, my hands on this in 2008 in Bern, after I quit my job to get this instrument, because my boss wouldn't let me have the time off, I always imagined having a child that I would play this with. And to have both of them playing, it for me, is just... Amazing. Well, how do you plan to get more? Because now, at the time you purchased yours, you stopped producing more of this. You can't get more. I mean, if something happens, I have to get another career. Wow. Please, yeah. we hope and pray that nothing happens to your house. Me too. I protect you know, it. Even my husband, he protects his big And Maybe you can guy. do a lot of investigation and find out how to make yours. Maybe one day. But the you know. thing is, I went to Benin and they can make it look the same, but at the moment, they not sound the same. So there oh. are maybe some counterfeit ones around the place, but this is the only kind of genuine hung in Africa. Okay, we'll get to feel the power and the magic of the hung in the moment. It's an improvisation. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.